Today we'll be taking a black and white image and showing you how you can paint it with color. Oh, it's so colorful in here now. What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Pimping Pixels, the only design show that will teach you the tips, tricks, and techniques that you need to become a pro. I'm your host Gregory Thelian and on today's episode what we're going to do is show you how you can easily take a black and white image and paint color into it. Now I've really been wanting to do this episode for a long time now, but I just never had the right black and white image to demonstrate it on. And you know, here at Pippin Pixels, it's about more than just the effect at hand. We really want to make these episodes awesome and fun for you guys. So, after a little bit of searching, I believe we found the perfect image for this tutorial. Alright, so I think you could all clearly see why I love this image so much. And I don't think there is any vintage image out there that's more pimping than this. So first, let's take a look at what our final result will end up looking like, and then I'll show you guys the simple way to do this, as well as the proper way to do this. Here you can see that adding color really gives this image even more life than it already had. And that's really the reason why you would want to do this type of effect on an image, you know? It's to just make it pop and stand out a lot more. And you know, you just inject more life into your image. So that's why a lot of people paint on top of a black and white image. It's not because the black and white image is bad, it's just, you know, you want to see that image in color. Now, we could easily add color to this just by grabbing our brush tool and then setting its blend mode to color and then selecting the color we want to paint and then finally all you have to do is just paint directly on top of your image. Now this gives us the effect that we're looking for but this is a really really bad way of doing it. Just for the fact that you're painting on top of your original layer in case you had to make any types of changes or adjustments or even erase anything you really don't have much control to do so. So how do we actually do this effect where we're painting color on top of a black and white image while still maintaining control over what we're painting? The answer is to simply just paint everything on a new layer. So let's do that. So instead of painting directly on my image layer, I'm just going to go make a new layer and paint on there. Now once you paint, you'll notice that it's not blending into his jacket the way it was before and we're really just painting solid blue on top of the image. So you could easily fix this just by changing the blend mode of this layer to color. Alright, so at this point if you really want to, all you need to do is just change the color of your brush and start painting in like the hair, the faces, the lipstick marks. You could do all of that on this layer that we created. However, there's a number of reasons why you want to take all your different colors and have them on separate layers. So let me just show you a few of those reasons why you want to set it up like that. One of the problems that you'll run into if you decide to paint everything all on one layer is that you might end up overlapping your colors and needing to erase. For example, if I start to paint this other woman's jacket and I end up slipping and going into the man's jacket, then I have to erase what I did and now I have to go back, find that blue color, and paint it all over again. But if I just created a new layer for the woman's jacket and then accidentally paint it over, all I need to do is just erase from that new layer that we created and it's not going to affect anything else. Alright, so now we got a big question on our hands here. And that is, how many new layers should you actually be making when doing something like this? And the best answer for this is to just make a brand new layer for each color that you're going to paint. Going into all the layers that I created, you'll see that I made brand new layers for every little piece that I painted. Since I painted the man's tongue differently than I made his lips, I made sure that I separated those layers. I wanted to make sure that each woman had a different shade of lipstick, so I made sure that those colors were on different layers as well. And every new color that I ended up painting has its own layer. Now let's just say you're not entirely too happy with one of the colors that you've painted and you really want to change it. Since we have everything on its own layer, we could easily make those types of adjustments and I'll show you how to do that right now. Now to make this part less confusing, I'm just going to hide all of my final colors that I've made and show you how to do this to the man's jacket first. So I have the jacket layer selected, 
Next, I'll go to the bottom of my layers and click the New Adjustment Layer button and select Hue Saturation. This will add a new Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer above the Jacket Layer and it will also pull open the Properties window. Now in this Properties window, you'll see a couple of sliders. All you need to do is drag around the saturation and lightness sliders in order to fine tune that blue color that we painted. However, if you want to change the color completely, just move the hue slider around. So you know, really all you need to do is play around with all three of these sliders until you get it looking just the way you want it to. Now doing it this way helps you avoid painting again and again with different colors until you get it correct. If you need to change the color, all you have to do is pull open the properties for your adjustment layer and move the sliders around a bit. And you know, just as an example, when I first showed this image to a bunch of my friends, just about all of them said that I painted the woman on the right way too pale. Well, all I have to do is go into the skin folder that I made for her, and on that adjustment layer, I'll increase the saturation and the lightness a bit. Now, as a quick tip, when you add your hue saturation adjustment layer, you really want to make sure that you clip it to your painted layer. In the properties window, you'll see a little button at the bottom that's a box with an arrow pointing down. This means that our adjustment will only affect the layer that is directly below it. If we did not do this, then you'll see a little line through that arrow letting you know that it is not clipped to the layer below, and this will mean that the adjustment will affect all of the layers that are below it, and that will seriously mess up all of your colors. Now you guys just learned how you could take a black and white image and paint some color into it. And on top of that, you even saw how you could set it up so that you have full control over each and every color that you paint. And if you want to see more design awesomeness like today's episode, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button so you see the newest episodes as soon as they air. And on top of that, you owe it to yourself to check out our Facebook page. Each and every week we update our Facebook page with brand new design tutorials and freebies. So go check that out. And now what I want you all to do is find your own cool black and white image, paint some color into it, keep on pimping them pixels. Hi, how you doing? I'm Greg Velia. <laughs> Look at all the color! I'm in a world of color! Oh my god, all the color! However, there's a number of different reasons why you want to keep all your different colors separated on different layers. There's a lot of differences in there. <laughs> Now, you don't need to use a Wacom tablet in order to paint color, you know, I just use it because I have it and it's easy. You could do this all, you know, with your mouse and just selecting brush tool and painting with your mouse, but it's a pain in the butt, so I like to use my Wacom tablet. You should get one too. Wacom! Wacom for life! Yeah! I was going for like a thug life, but Wacom, you know? Wacom life, no, doesn't work. I want to be a thug. Look at this guy. Look at how happy he is. He's got two women. Two women kissing him. Kissing different shades of lipstick. I'll show you how to paint those different colors. And make it different colors. Two women. Blonde, brunette. I could have made them both blonde if I wanted to. You could do that. We're painting it. It was black and white, and now we're painting it. Now, go out there, find a cool photo. Ah, I was doing so good. Ah, I messed it up. I was doing so good, and I messed it up. Take two.